three, two, one. Welcome to the SaaS Pulse Show. My name is Michael Bertoni, and I'm the founder and CEO of SaaS Talent. And it is so exciting uh, today. I have an amazing guest that I actually met just at SaaS Open a little while back. His name is Alex Raymond. He's from Boulder. He is the CEO of Cap Capta. I wanted to make sure I said that right. He also has his own show. He's the host of the Conscious Entrepreneur Summit, and he's eight years at Techstars. So we're talking for anybody listening to this right now. I mean, startup expert, startup guru right here. So Alex, it's great to have you on the show. Great. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Michael. Looking forward to the conversation. Yeah. And I'm really psyched about it too, because my background is in sales. I mean, so I, before I started my company, SaaS Talent, I was business development, I was sales. And- key account management. We're going to be talking about that today and the value of that. But what I first always like to go with, Alex, is the superhero backstory. So I always love everybody's superhero backstory. So your background that brought you uh, to Capca, uh, uh and what, tell us, tell the audience about that. Yeah, well, as you, uh, as you shared, uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Capta. We uh, do software in the account management space. So this is for post sales uh, people whose job is to keep and grow existing customers. And uh, that, that's a, it's a very interesting niche. There's a lot going on there, but we didn't start there. And my background didn't come from account management. Uh, in fact, I knew almost nothing about this just a few years ago. Hmm. We initially built uh, the company Capta as uh, an HR platform. And uh, wow. the story here was that was, my background, I'd been in HR tech for a while. My co-founder had also been in HR tech for a while. We had worked together at a previous company in the early 2000s. And we set out to create a tool that would uh, help with things like uh, performance reviews and you know, what are your annual goals as, a, as an employee and how do they link up to your big goals of your company and all that sort of stuff. And uh, we, you mentioned Techstars. So Techstars is a very well-known uh, accelerator for startup companies. And we went through that program a long time ago uh, with the idea that we were doing this HR tech. And uh, as with many things in the startup world, what we thought was true wasn't true. And what we thought was an opportunity wasn't. And it turns out the opportunity was somewhere else entirely. And so here's what we found, though, because the story is really interesting. Um, what we found was we were able to go out and sell the product that we had. So we would meet, you know, VPs of HR or whatever it was, sell uh, the product, talk about alignment and, you know, getting everybody on the same page. And uh, we had a bunch of customers use it, but we didn't have kind of all that much traction. And we were, we sort of got this sense that like, okay, I wonder if some, there's some friction here or what's, you know, what's not working, what's, what's missing. And as we were starting to uncover that and unpack that a little bit, Michael, what we noticed was uh, three of our customers had independently all started to do the same behavior. And what they had started to do was they were tracking a bunch of stuff in the platform, mm -hmm. but instead of that being used for their internal like performance process, they were sharing it with their customers. So they all had really big customers. So it was like, you know, our customers were like Walmart or Vodafone or whatever. And so what our clients were doing is they were saying, we've got these big customers, Walmart, Vodafone, Citibank, et cetera. And if we don't deliver for them, then they're going to drop us as, as a supplier or, you know, I've made all these commitments and I need to track the commitments that I've made to my customers. Mm -hmm. And so we noticed this, like, you know, we could see what was happening inside the product. So we, we would see that someone was saying, okay, I need to do these five things for Citibank and I need to do these seven things for Vodafone and this stuff for Walmart or whatever it was. And uh, it was really interesting. It was sort of a head scratching moment, right? Like, hey, uh, we built this thing for internal for HR and people are seem to be getting value and using this for their customers, which uh, was a use case we didn't think of at all. So, wow. you know, we did what you would imagine, which is we called them up and we said, what are you guys doing? And, you know, basically, why are you not using the, the tool in the way that we thought you should be using it? And as you know, when you're building a startup, uh, the answers are not inside the building. The answers are all outside of the building, right? The answers are with the, the customers, with the market. And so the customers told us, um, well, we've got these big clients and these big commitments to them, and we don't have a way of tracking, did we do the things that we said we were going to do? Mm. And that. we were like, huh, that's interesting. And then I asked the obvious question, well, 
why don't you use your CRM? Because after all, doesn't that stand for customer relationship management? And then they, again, blew my socks off by all saying the exact same thing. You can't do this in a CRM. And we were like, okay, so you can't use a CRM to manage your customers and the commitments and the stuff that you're doing for them. And they said, no, you use a CRM for pipeline and leads and marketing and data and all this other stuff. But when it comes to actually helping your customers to succeed, the CRM is terrible at that. And that was the genesis of what is today CAPTA, Michael. So we learned that uh, there was a huge hole in the market because CRMs were basically ending at sale. Contract signed, CRMs end. And there's this whole world now around customer success, uh, key account management, client services, all these things that have now emerged as a category because of the fact that the CRM ends at sale. And so that was our backstory getting there. It was like, we started in HR, we realized That's that great. people were using the tool in a different way. And then we said, well, great, let's go talk about what those challenges are in the market and how we might be able to solve them. So that's been our evolution at CAPTA. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, first you did a pivot, right? So you talk to your customer. So everybody listening here, simple stuff here, but you got to talk to your customers, right? Even if, even if you don't have a product, you got to talk to your customers, right? And you got to see what they want. What are their pains that you can solve? And I love customer success. So one of the core things that we do, Alex, here is customer success for clients. And yeah, I mean, so that's what I was going to ask you because I was looking at your website and I saw key account management and I thought, this is customer success too, which you, which, which you know. So that's amazing. So what I would love for you to do, Alex, is tell the audience, give, give us the elevator pitch, right? Give us, give us the, the, the succinct 30 to 60 second elevator pitch of what your product is and the value proposition. So I met you at SAS Open in March. And at SAS Open, there were some really interesting talks about the current state of sales. Uh, and so there was this data from uh, Pavilion and from EBSTA on what does sales currently look like? And you heard some of this stuff, right? Like we know that in 2023, win rates were down, sales cycles were up, deal values were down, reps are missing quota. And this is all on, on the new business side. We also know that it's harder to get a new customer than ever. We know that the payback period to turn a customer profitable is longer than it's ever been. Right. And so what does this mean? This means that it's a tremendous lift to win a customer in 2024. Getting the client is way harder than it used to be. It's a really big deal to, to win a new customer. And so across the board, we've seen that that is true. What does that mean? That means that it's more important than ever to keep the customers you've got. So keep them, defend the revenue, and then grow the revenue. And when you look at the discipline that a sales team has, right? They've got process and they've got activities that are tracking and they've got a way of doing things and their checklists and their playbooks. And there's a lot of scrutiny put on the salespeople and the new business side. And uniformly, when it gets to the post sales, there's almost no process, almost no measurement, almost no discipline. And so we spend, you know, whatever it is, millions of dollars acquiring a handful of new customers. And then we spend all this time on that. We, and we analyze the data, et cetera. And then we just sort of chuck it over to the wall to the account management people or the customer success people and say, good luck, you know, off you go. Now, here's the thing in a typical year, Post sales, so the account management team will manage 71% of a company's revenue. Yes. In a year like 2024, guess what? That's like 80 or 85% of revenue because new business is down so much. So it's more important than ever for us to defend the revenue and then expand the revenue that we've got. So the value proposition of CAPTA is tools, which include software, community, resources, training, best practices to help stand up account management functions that deliver on the promise of keeping and growing your revenue. I love it. I mean, let's, let's dive deep because I, I want to learn more because everybody needs help with this, right? So everybody listening to this can understand, got to keep a customer, right? You got to keep them happy. You got to have a process to onboard them, you know, 30, 60, 90 for the yep. year, everything. I mean, I, I want to dive into it. So tell us a little bit more about the product itself, right? So what are, what are the things about the product that are critical? What are the killer features? What sets it apart in the market? 
this is really about visibility. That's like the core. Visibility is the is the core theme here. Uh, it's amazing when I go talk to heads of account management or chief customer officers or CROs, and I say things like, you know, where's the data on your big customer? Right. I saw that. I see on your website that Pepsi is your big customer. Like, what's the data on them? How do you know how it's going with Pepsi? And right. they give me all these answers. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, we got some stuff in Salesforce, and we have seventy five spreadsheets. We have stuff in the Slack channel and Teams, and the you know some intranet and and la di da. And and people literally don't know. They could have a ten million dollar customer or bigger, and they can't tell me how's it going with that client. Wow. What's their likelihood of renewing? What's their likelihood of expanding? What happens if our champion leaves? So key, key value proposition in CAPTA is visibility. So mm -hmm. what I'm doing to bring visibility is we're giving a process that says, here's how you up-level your account management so that you gain that visibility. You do things like create an org chart within of, of the company, right? Literally a visual org chart. Who works for whom? What's their role? What do they mean to us? Do they like us? Do they not like us? What was my last activity with this person? That sort of thing. So I can get a contact map, a relationship map. So that's a critical part of this. Then I want to do things like voice of customer interviews. Notice I did not say NPS survey. This is not about sending an NPS survey. This is about right. sitting down with a customer, with an executive and saying, hey, wow, 2024, there's a lot going on. How is this impacting your business? What are you seeing coming up? What are your customers telling you? And those types of conversations, that's about gathering data so that I can then have a wider, a wider aperture of understanding the customer. Because if I understand more of their needs, if I understand more of what they're actually trying to accomplish, I can provide the right level of service and product and so on. That's, <laughs> excuse me, that's going to help them get there. So that's really important. So tracking then based on that, what are the customer's goals? What mm -hmm. are the results that they need to justify why they're working with us? Right. What are the results that they need to sort of check the box and say, yes, we got there. We want to stay with this company. We want to stay with their product or service. So it's almost like a scorecard mm -hmm. based on the value that the customer is getting. Now, I'll tell you one thing. People get this completely wrong today because they think that the value scorecard is based on how much stuff they're buying from me, which is absolutely not correct. The correct way to look at this is what does the customer care about? What are his or her metrics that they need to report up to their boss or their executives or whoever it is? And how can I help them succeed? If I help them succeed, then guess what? They will most of the time wind up buying more from me and have, will have a longer more profitable relationship. But everyone th has this internal view. And at Capta, what we're doing is we're giving them a, essentially a template to become a better account manager through that process. I love I love this, Alex. I got to tell you, back when I worked at a... I have a great intro for you. So back when I worked at this company called Alliance Global Services, Bill Llewellyn ran delivery. We would run our whole business off of this dashboard that he created of every account in delivery and it was like, you know, the red, yellow, green, but then it was like drilled down. It's like great introduction. Like it's me, it's flashing me back to like during our weekly status meetings, they were really good at it, but it was, but again, it was just like an Excel dashboard. Basically it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't software, right? right? It wasn't, it wasn't scalable. Right. Sure. So yeah, that's a great intro for you. So I want to write that down, but th this is awesome. So in terms of your challenges, so the other thing that everybody should know is Alex is going on almost 10 years. So he's going to be getting those LinkedIn messages in about a month, 10 year anniversary, right? <laughs> right? So, <laughs> and so what are the biggest challenges? So some of the challenges you faced, right? So I saw you're at Techstars in 2014, sure. right? You pivoted, right? So the 10 year journey, what have been some of the biggest challenges you faced and how did you overcome them? You know, when you're, when you're building a company, uh, the hardest thing to do is to figure out what is reality. And the reason I say that is, uh, you know, we have all these ideas and inspirations and thoughts like, oh, we could do this or that. We build this product, build that product. And the reality is, what does the market care about? Where is the customer, uh, you know, to use that phrase, like, where is the puck going? And people spend so much time. And then probably the biggest killer of startups is creating a product that the market doesn't want. Simply the market simply does not care about. Exactly. And so, you know, the challenge for us has been identifying 
who within the market are our ideal customers? What are the problems and challenges that they're trying to solve? What are the uh, characteristics of their business? So what does their company look like? And uh, really to hone in on that. So for example, we found some really interesting stuff out there. Number one, we perform great with companies that have a highly, um, like a very um, uh, niche market, meaning mm -hmm. they sell to a very well-defined group of customers. They could be selling in only one segment. So what does that mean? That means that they've got to deliver and they've got to have their own snowball effect within that segment. Therefore, they have to invest in the concept of key account management. We also know, for example, that PE-backed companies are great fit for us. Why? Because a private equity owner will come in and say, we want to get as much as we can out of the existing assets, including, of course, the customers. Mm -hmm. And so learning those things along the way has been really important to us. So the challenge of who's the customer, what do they actually care about, what's the uh, compare like the defensible comparison between us and anything else. That's all part of learning about the uh, the market and solving that challenge. Of course, we then have this other challenge, which is to the uh, first time buyer or someone who's just coming cr across this. They they say, "Oh, well, Capta sounds like the CRM. I've already got a CRM, so I'm good." And so we have to instead talk a lot about what are the differences there. What are the differences in the use cases? What are the differences in the features? What are the differences in the benefits that you're going to get from a CRM, which is focused on typically lots more data, lots more spray and pray, uh, you know, sort of sales and marketing motion versus account management software, which is we've already got the customer. So we have less, you know, we don't have that great big universe of data. We have a much smaller set of data, but it's valuable and we've got to get this right. So what do we have to do right? So talking about that also and creating distinction between Captain and the CRM is something that uh, that we've had to deal with as well. Definitely. Yeah, I completely understand. I was going to ask you specifically for people listening what your ICP is so we could obviously get some referrals to Alex if anybody has any. So are there any specific types of industries or markets where again, you said people are hyper specific in a market or some or any any particular types of companies that you work with? Uh, you know, we have we have customers, our customers, like I said, ha have very specific clients. So we have clients who work, for example, in reinsurance. So their customers are insurance companies. And guess what? There's not very many of them. Uh, we have clients whose customers are utilities. Again, guess what? It's a pretty defined market. Um, and so those are interesting dynamics to see. Our clients today, um, have quite a range in terms of size and revenue. Our biggest customer is uh, in the multi-billions of dollars in terms of their revenue. So really, really big Fortune 500 company. But for the most part, our clients are anywhere between sort of 20 to three or $400 million in revenue. So like sort of SMB size. And I'll share that their customers are very big. So their customers are all enterprise. So if you sell to enterprise, if you are starting to scale and you're at that, you know, 20, 50, $100 million mark, you're trying to figure out how do I increase my maturity and increase my capability as it relates to post-sales account management, then those are great fits for us. Nice. So in, ter in terms of talent for your organization, talent acquisition, people, I love hearing the stories of how founders and CEOs go about this. So how do you look at that for your organization? Talent acquisition, recruiting people. What are some of the key takeaways for you? Uh, we've been able to operate very lean. So, so we have a small team. We're extremely effective. We're very cost efficient. Uh, almost any time that we need stuff done, my answer, Michael, is to usually look for uh, something virtual. So can I find someone who can do, you know, if we have a marketing program, can I find someone uh, who who can just come in and do a project, for example. So we've done that for everything from marketing to working within our CRM and our data sets to uh, creating content for us uh, to doing you know some of the outsource stuff that uh, that the team might need to do on the technology side for uh, QA or testing or anything of, of those those uh, that sort of thing. And so what that allows us to do is operate with a pretty low cost base which is a big deal in 2024 because cost and cost is a, is a priority. Profitability is the priority for a lot of people. Uh, and so that's really been our strategy there. Nice. So this has been great, Ox. Great show. Love, love this information. Last question that I love to get answered from founders, especially 10 years is the advice, right? So what are the two or three biggest pieces of advice that you could give the people listening to this, 
startup founders, people in their journey? What What do you think there? Uh, you know, there's. I'll, I'll take the startup founder part of this here, Michael, and, and chat about that a bit. You know, the um, the number one thing is to remember that the answers are not inside the building, and therefore, I've I've got to be curious. And I've got to be very aggressive at finding what reality looks like. Uh, so another way, another way of my phrase is, is don't believe all the thoughts you have. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you know, we all show up with a bias, which is, oh, I created this thing or I had this idea. It's going to be amazing. And it's going to do A, B, and C, and D, E, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and it's easy to get all wrapped up in that. Um, but your success has more to do with the market than it has to do with your great idea. And so finding yeah. out and doing the calls and having the meetings and the coffee meetings and the lunches and whatever it is, going to the conferences to understand what does reality look like is a, actually a great use of time, especially at the beginning. And associated to that, you know, there's this really important concept in startups called product market fit, which basically means does the, do the benefits that our product or service offer match the needs and the problems that the customer is trying to solve, right? Do they, do they harmonize together? And a lot of people think, I just get to product market fit and then I hang up my hat and I'm done. And the fact is that is a shifting and changing game as well. Mm -hmm. And so you can't put your feet up and declare victory just because you found product market fit. You got to keep working it and see what happens and see what's next. So my advice to everyone in this regard is spend more time with customers, spend more time being curious, spend lots more time listening uh, than you do talking. Love it. So Alex, it's been great having you on the show. Uh, again, it's Alex Raymond. And uh, please reach out to him. I mean, he looks like he's got a wealth of knowledge. If you, if you have any referrals or you just want advice, I mean, he's he's been there, done that. He, and he's also tech stars. He's, it looked like you were an advisor there or you were- Mentor, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mentor there. That's amazing. So it was awesome having you on the show, Alex. I'm looking forward to following your journey. Super. Thanks so much for having me, Michael. Appreciate it. Great.